good afternoon, and th uh, thanks for coming for my talk. So I'm giving this talk on behalf of Raghudeep Gade and Varun Jampani, who have uh, some uh, visa issues that uh, prevent them from attending uh, ICCV. And our work was done uh, while we were all at the Max Planck Institute for Intelligent Systems in Tübingen. We all uh, changed locations afterwards. So undeniably, in the last couple of years, we have witnessed tremendous progress in semantic segmentation, right? Because both old and new CNN models paired with huge amounts of data have led to an ever-increasing uh, performance and decreasing of computational complexity. However, there are some important applications that demand the processing of videos. So street scene segmentation is one that the investors seem to, be love, uh, uh, seem to love the most, and therefore we have some good data sets in this domain, but it's very likely that, we will, uh, that others will follow. In this work, we are interested to develop video-based CNNs, and in particular, we would like to turn existing single-image CNNs into video CNNs without touching them too much, so you can reuse them. So this is your normal setup, right? Input image to the left, your favorite CNN architecture in the middle that processes it, and out comes the semantic segmentation of the scene, a separate class for every pixel. And our, it, our technique applies to several networks, and that's why I use the schematic figure for the CNN here in the middle. Now, a new image arrives in the stream, and obviously the most easy way to proceed now is to apply your CNM frame by frame. And that's actually not a bad idea, right, for several reasons. It's very easy to wrap your head around and very easy to implement. And all future process, uh, uh, sorry, all future progress on uh, single frame CNNs translates directly onto a better frame by frame model, and it's very likely that we'll always have more static training examples than labeled videos. And finally, catastrophic failures in one frame are not forwarded to the new image, and therefore there's an inherent chance to recover from severe errors, and that may be a very desirable property of your system. So what relates the two input images is scene and camera motion, and this can be uh, described by optical flow. So one idea could be to use the optical flow to transform the end results forward and combine in some kind of MIF model or LSTM model or uh, some other time series model. So we will use optical flow, but we will not transform the end result because that's where all the CNN for information is already condensed. Uh, but we'll transform the intermediate representations of the CNN and combine them in the next frame. So this is what we call a net warp, a transformation of the CNN activations. This can be applied at uh, um, several depths, once or multiple times. It can be applied to your favorite CNN architecture, and the run times are in the tens of milliseconds. So that's negligible compared to the, C uh, to the CNN run time of the uh, frame model. So let me explain the network model, and I promise it's extremely simple. So we compute the CNN activations up to some layer. We want to apply the network module, say in this case it's K. So we also compute the optical flow method with uh, uh, optical flow field with some method. Um, this we denote by FT uh, between the two input images. So the flow image could now already be used to warp the activities of the previous uh, um, ZT minus one directly, and we'll show results for this, but we add a small network that transforms the flow, uh, the, uh, the flow predictions. So specifically, we have a small three-layer network that receives as input the flow and two input images and predicts a new transformation match, uh, map that also matches the scale of the activations. So now given this, act, uh, this transformation on the correct scale, we can interpolate and warp the activities of ZT minus one. And then finally, we linearly combine channel-wise the two activities, so outcomes and activation vector tilde Z, that's the same size of Z before. So then we can proceed with the rest of the, of the frame by frame um, at CNN. So you see that this has a tiny computational footprint. Computing the flow is actually the most demanding. And also you realize that this is very easy to backpropagate uh, back through and learn the few parameters that are in the combine layer and in the transform layer. So I hope you agree this couldn't really be easier. So before going to the experiments, let me mention some related work on semantic video segmentation. And I will uh, mention approaches that aim to reuse existing single frame CNNs. So of course in times of archive, I have to apologize for the works not mentioned here. There's a longer discussion in the paper and there are also a number of interesting works at this, uh, on this topic here already at this conference. So clockwork confnets aim to reduce computations and use representation of the previous frame for obtaining the segmentation results of the current frame. Our previous work on video propagation networks was designed to, co uh, to propagate a segmentation mask. It builds on the bilateral filter and this network was designed to be class agnostic with no need for fine tuning and post processing. It's slow, however, due to bilateral filtering. The work Deep Feature Flow that appeared at CVPR 17 this year has the same basic idea as our work here. So there, the CNN is applied for every end frames and for the intermediate frames, they warp the representation using optical flow. So similar to the clockwork confnets, the aim is to reduce computational complexity. 
So let me note that both for the clockwork confinet and the deep feature flow method, the intersection of a union performance actually drops when compared to the single frame by frame application of the CNN. And that's something we wanted to avoid. And through our data sets and CNN architectures, we always found network to increase the segmentation performance. So let me describe the experiments. We have results for the most two prominent video data sets, CamVit and Cityscapes, for which ground truth is available for, for one out of 30 frames. Intersection over unions and variance from them are the standard metrics, and that's what we use to compare our results also with other approaches. We use NetWarp to augment several existing state-of-the-art CNNs and observe imp uh, improvements across all of them. So let me walk you through the, ex uh, the experimental results. So first, we add our NetWarp module, a single network, NetWarp module, to the state-of-the-art play data CNN from Richter et al. and to the dilation CNN. And so inserting a network module st straight away improves already performance over the baseline models, irrespective of, uh, of the depth of uh, where we apply it at the layer. It's usually applied at higher layers, though. Having multiple network modules um, at different depths shows better performance. And next, we also observe that just using optical flow alone, so not, um, so not learning a transformation, already improves the performance, um, but transforming the flow helps a little bit more. For a direct comparison with other video segmentation uh, techniques, we show results using the dilation CNN model from you. We observe better performance than post-processing techniques like the feature space optimi optimization that uses a dense CIF and our previous work on video propagation networks. And then finally, the co additional computational overhead per frame is tiny compared to the runtime of the baseline CNN models. So notice that all of the improvements of network come at a cost of a mere 50 milliseconds. And the runtime that I show here already includes the time for computing the optical flow. For all of these experiments, we use the dense inverse search flow disk flow. So here are results on Cityscape's validation data set. Uh, and in addition to intersection over union, we also report results on TriMap intersection over union and instance inter intersection over union. And uh, details of this are in the paper and also in the poster. We observe similar improvements across these three different metrics on the Cityscape's validation data set, and with only a few milliseconds of, uh, um, uh, of extra runtime. And in this case here, we are augmenting the permit uh, scene parsing network. So here's a screenshot of the public leaderboard of the Cityscapes data set that we took in May this year. This is sorted by intersection of a union, and this is uh, sorted by uh, instance intersection of a union. And uh, these are results on the Cityscapes test set, and we observe similar pro uh, improvements here again over the baseline CNNs. And obviously, ever since, we have uh, surpassed by a number of techniques. However, this retains the only technique that marked itself as being a video CNN. Um, and we hope that we see similar improvements when combined with more recent models as well. So let's have a look at some visual results. So the image in the top row show the current frame and its corresponding ground truth, and the bottom row shows the segmentation result from the baseline CNN that we, that we then augmented with, uh, uh, with a network. So we observe that adding a network particularly helps in segmenting thin structures like poles, traffic lights, and traffic signs. So here in this example, the CNN completely misses poles, and the network helps to recover those. Network not only improves at boundaries, but helps also in improving the performance of bigger regions and correct entire areas. In this example here, we're correcting while well, we're recovering a wall on the left of the image. We have a more detailed study of where errors appear um, in the paper. To evaluate the impact of the optical flow method, we tested two different methods because ground truth flow was not available. Disk flow is extremely fast, but less accurate, and flow fields is accurate, but slower, and we found that this had very little impact on the results. And this hints that optical flow is actually only needed as a rough guide to transform activations uh, as poorly because in the higher levels of the CNN where, where we apply network, already some spatial information is lost. To understand how the optical flow changes with our transformation CNN, we, we can visualize this. So on the bottom left here, you see the input flow that this flow computed. And on the uh, bottom right, you see the transformation that our network uh, predicted. So note that the uh, transformation has access to flow and the two input images here. So I wouldn't claim that this is an accurate flow estimate, but it does help to warp the representations. So this is a video uh, that shows segmentation results on the Cityscapes uh, um, demo video. On the right, we show the output of the uh, uh, fluid scene parsing network and the augmented one. In the bottom left, you see where the both, uh, where the results of the both networks um, differ. And it's mostly at thin structures. And as I said, we have a detailed analysis of this in the, in the, in the paper and on the poster. 
here. To conclude, so I presented NetWarp that I think is a very simple technique based on optical flow, which shows consistent improvements when turning an image CNN into a video CNN. It's very easy to apply to, uh, to new network architectures and usually only adds a few milliseconds of your runtime, which is dominated by, by optical flow. So again, this is the work of Raghudeep and Varun, really, and I uh, thank you for your attention. For that, do we have any questions? Okay, I'll start. So you learn the warping network to transform between the frames. Uh, to what extent is that data set specific? Does it matter if you learn the warping network on one kind of video and you apply it on another one? Yeah, that's a very good question. So, uh, so, so I'm a bit puzzled that actually, um, so we were thinking about what's the easiest way to actually do it with correct optical flow. So if I would give you the correct optical flow, then I would think that this is um, not data set specific anymore. So maybe it's the problem that actually should be transferred to the optical flow estimation uh, here. So I guess that the, um, I mean, I, I also wouldn't claim that it is actually worth adding, adding, adding the two images uh, to learn the transformation, and that's, I think, what is actually making it data set specific. Otherwise, it's basically what the, what the, what the flow method uh, um, uh, outputs, and that is improving already on all the data sets and the net networks that we have observed. So maybe it's really a question of flow. Thanks. Any other questions? I wanted to ask a simple question. If you think it uh, could be beneficial to use several temporal scales to track uh, objects of different speed. Yes, definitely. So I think uh, what we did here is we implemented network at several, at several depth layers. It would make obviously sense to also add modules that transform between, between CNNs that have been a number of steps away. So the deep feature flow, for example, is a method that like skips over longer uh, over, over longer areas. That's probably why the performance drops there. So this could be a way of like recovering this. Um, that definitely is uh, uh, um, is a is an extension. So it would go away a little bit from what we try to uh, uh, try to do here is to have like a tiny thing that only runs in 15 milliseconds and improves. Yes, that's an, uh, that's an, and that could also probably be learned of like actually how far you will need to go back in the future, uh, sorry, in the past. <laughs>